I fought for God. Who do you fight for, Exile? Hey there, welcome to another Path of Exile guide. This time I'll be telling you everything you need to know about the heist mechanic. I'll be covering the very basics such as how to run your first heist, crew members and how to get your full team, their skills, perks and gears all the way up to grand heists. I'll also talk about what rewards you can expect from each type of heist as well as a few tips and tricks on how to maximize your heist profit. Before diving into a guide proper, I need to add two short disclaimers. First, while the core mechanic is unlikely to change, some aspects might be tweaked and balanced as the league progresses. For example, it is entirely possible that a few weeks from now, lockpicking heists will no longer be the most profitable ones. Since I can't really predict the future, I leave it to you to keep an eye on patch notes and up to date with any changes. Second, if anything is unclear or you have any questions about heists or even Path of Exile in general, you can find me streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash navandis, link to the schedule in the pinned comment and video description. I'm generally live 4 or 5 times a week and I'm always happy to help new players better understand this game. Ok, with that out of the way, let's talk about rogue markers, contracts and blueprints. These are found either as drops from literally any mobs outside heists or in smugglers caches which can spawn in each act of the campaign or atlas maps. Rogue markers have two basic uses. First, while in your hideout or in any town, you can right click on them to open a portal to the rogue harbor. Once in the rogue harbor, most services provided by various NPCs there, including your crew members, will cost some amount of rogue markers. As they say, no honor or freebies among thieves. Contracts are the items used to open up a heist and, if you're familiar with Atlas maps, they're basically the equivalent for the heist system. They can be crafted using currency such as orbs of transmutation, augmentation, alteration, alchemy, etc. That will generally increase the amount and rarity of the loot you'll get, but also make the resulting heist more dangerous. Finally, blueprints are the items used to start a grand heist, which is basically a collection of several regular heists with a few extra twists. I'll come back to grand heists a bit later, but for now I'll just add that markers, contracts and blueprints can all be traded with other players. So you have a few markers in your pocket, a nice contract and you've just teleported in the rogue harbor looking to run your first heist. Completing each contract will always require a single rogue skill, such as lockpicking or demolition, at a certain minimum level and this is visible in the contract's description. As such, when running a contract, you'll need to hire a crew member who has that specific skill. You can check which crew members you have available in your roster by pressing V key while in the rogue harbor. At first, you'll only have 3 members available for hiring, but you'll eventually enlarge your team to 9. Initially, you'll do this by finding these green contracts in smugglers caches. These are quest items which can be used in the rogue harbor to open up a special type of heist. In addition to that, running heists with a recently unlocked crew member will have them introduce you to a new rogue character that will join the team after successfully completing that heist. Every crew member can have between 2 and 4 different skills, each capped between levels 2 and 5. The list of skills for each rogue as well as the maximum level for each skill are predetermined and they cannot learn new skills or change existing ones. So let's take Tolina here as an example. She has agility, lockpicking and trap disarmament skills. That's all she has and all she'll ever have. For Tolina, lockpicking is capped at level 3, trap disarmament at level 2 and agility at level 5. I can further level up her agility skill by successfully completing contracts which require this ability. On the other hand, Nanette has perception and counter thaumaturgy skills capping at level 5 and 4 respectively. Each crew member also has one unique set of heist perks and the bonuses these provide increase when leveling up any of the rogue's skills. Alright, so now we have a contract requiring a skill that one of your rogues is proficient in. Next step is to talk to Adia, the most important NPC in the entire town. Once you hand her a contract, she'll ask you to choose one of the available crew members to take with you in that heist. You'll also see the total upfront markers cost broken down between travel fee for the portal, hiring fee for your rogue and the rings cut. Each of these taxes can be decreased or even nullified through your followers items or with various mods on the contract itself. After you step through the portal, you'll be taken to a safe zone where you can turn on your auras or summon minions before going in in the heist itself. Once inside, you should open up the map and check what are the available rewards and the general route to the final objective room depicted by this showcase icon. As you progress through the heist, you'll encounter various locked doors and traps and you can either click on the icon or press V to have your rogue take care of these obstacles. These actions do not raise your alert level and neither does killing any guards you come across. 
However, opening small or large chests will do so and the exact amount is shown while hovering over them. This is affected by a rogue's perks and items and some, such as Karst or Tulina, can actually open all the chests in an entire heist without triggering the alert. Any items you pick up are marked as contraband and have a padlock icon meaning you cannot use or identify them until you escape. You cannot open portals and you're limited to one full inventory, so choose wisely. If you die during a heist, all the contraband items will be dropped and there is absolutely no way to come back or recover them. Once you reach the final room with a curio display, you need to break it and grab the quest item inside. Regardless of what your alert level was before that, this action will fill it up entirely and trigger a complete lockdown after a short time. During this lockdown countdown, you can still open chests and some rogues have special perks that further increase this time frame. You can take advantage of this by leaving several unopened chests close to the final room so you don't yet trigger the alarm. Open all the doors and kill all the guards, quickly open all the leftover chests starting from the one furthest away, then break the curia display. You can also leave the loot on the ground as you can still pick it up after the complete lockdown. If you time this correctly, you can open a few extra chests each heist and this really adds up on the long run. Once the alarm breaks out, new guards will start spawning in large numbers. These are much much stronger than the hobos you encountered on the way in and can quickly kill you if you're not prepared. Your absolute number one priority at this point is to keep advancing towards the exit which is the same place you came in through. Guards will keep spawning regardless of how many you kill and you'll end up swamped if you don't push your way to the exit. On top of that, certain doors you've opened on your way in will now be locked once again with a large number of tough enemies waiting for you behind them. This will put additional pressure on you as you'll need to deal with packs of mobs coming in from behind as well as those swarming in once you open the doors. While the first waves of mobs will provide XP and drops, subsequent ones don't to prevent infinite farming abuse. As such, there's really no reason to hang around and it's incredibly risky to do so anyway. Once you finally get out, your rogue will gain a certain amount of XP for the skill they used in that heist and you get to keep all the loot which is no longer marked as contraband. The quest item you've picked up from the final room can be sold to this fence NPC for a decent amount of markers offsetting the cost of running that heist. You can also leave a heist before triggering the alarm and you'll get to keep the loot you've gathered up to that point. While this doesn't provide any XP for a rogue or markers from selling the target item, it might be worth it if you've picked up something very valuable and don't want to risk losing it by dying once the alarm is triggered. After running a few heists, there's a high chance we've started finding bits and pieces of rogue gear. Each crew member can equip 4 different items, a brooch, weapon, tool and cloak. Tools are skill specific and can only be equipped by rogues which have that skill, while the rest of the gear pieces are generic. All these can and should be crafted using currencies such as Orbs of Transmutation, Alteration, Regal, etc. Brooches can roll mods that provide a chance to duplicate certain rewards from heist chests. For example, this one has a chance to duplicate divination card rewards as well as sextants. On top of that, it increases the value of the heist target item, netting you more markers when sold to the fence. Weapons can increase both the rogue's damage as well as yours, they can provide auras which will affect you as well, reduce fees for running a contract or increase the XP your rogue is getting. Cloaks are used to lower the overall alert level, increase the lockdown timer as well as provide a chance to not raise the alert level when opening a chest. Finally, tools are generally about reducing fees, increasing XP as well as making your rogues quicker at their jobs. This becomes quite important especially when you're trying to get out quickly with a whole bunch of loot. The last thing you need then is to wait 5 extra seconds for tips to blow up a door. After running a few heists you might notice some patterns regarding the type of rewards you get from the big chests. And indeed there is a direct correlation between the heist type aka what rogue skill it requires and the type of reward chests you'll find inside. Here's a handy table that shows the association between heist types and rewards as well as which crew members have their respective skill and the level it caps at. Obviously this is not set in stone and can change as the league progresses for balancing purposes. Finally let's talk about grand heists. As mentioned earlier, these are basically a collection of individual heists called wings and they're accessed using blueprints. Each blueprint will indicate how many wings, escape routes and hidden treasure rooms it has as well as the type of rewards found in the final room. By default, blueprints you find only have one wing rebuilt, but you can unveil additional ones by talking to the NPC Wakano. This will cost a certain amount of markers as well as a reveal token. You obtain one such reveal token for each regular heist you complete and there are certain rogue item mods that have a chance to grant you an additional one each run. Apart from entire wings, you can also reveal individual reward rooms as well as escape routes inside them. 
This can make the overall grand heist much more profitable and increase your chance to escape with all the contraband loot. It is of course not mandatory to unveil all the reward rooms or even all the wings. It's also worth noting that crew members Gianna and Niles will provide reveals at a lower price, the value of the discount being based off their rogue perk. Once you're happy with your blueprint, it's time to decide on the team of rogues that will accompany you and this is done in the planning room. This time you won't bring just a single crew member as grand heists require several different skills for each wing. Still, each rogue does actually have multiple skills and certain Grand Heist wings might require two or more jobs that can be performed by one and the same crew member. In this case, you can actually select them multiple times. If you have the same rogue present twice in the same Heist wing team, their perk and gear bonuses will apply twice multiplicatively. This may or may not be desirable on a case-by-case -case basis and it's up to you to decide in each scenario. After you've decided on your team, confirm the plans, grab your blueprint and go to Adia. Once you step through a portal, you'll be teleported to a common staging area that connects all the wings of the Grand Heist. From here, the task is simple. Complete each individual wing and make it out alive with all the loot. The key difference from regular heists is the final room. Instead of a quest item that's sold for markers, you actually get tangible rewards. This can be alternate quality gems, replica uniques, enchanted items or currency and trinkets. The blueprint for each grand heist will indicate exactly what type of rewards you'll be getting in the final room. Once you reach there, you'll notice several display cases, but you can pick up just a single item. As soon as you break one display case, the wing will go into lockdown and you won't be able to loot the other items in the room. Once you complete an individual wing and make it out with the loot, you should theoretically be able to teleport to the rogue harbor, empty your inventory and go back in to complete the remaining wings. However, at the time of recording this guide, due to a bug, you won't be able to return to your grand heist as your portal is in another rogue harbor instance. My advice is to avoid doing that until the bug is confirmed to be fixed. Finally, earlier I've mentioned trinkets as a possible reward. These are a new type of item for your character and you unlock the trinket gear slot in your first blueprint with the reward type Thieves Trinkets or Currency. Trinkets will always drop corrupted so they cannot be modified or recrafted and they will only roll mods affecting heist rewards. For example, they can provide a chance for drop currency to be upgraded into a higher tier one. This trinket here gives a 5% chance for augmentation orbs dropped in heist to be transformed into chaos orbs. Other mods will increase the overall quantity or rarity of dropped items, improve the rewards of big chests and other similar rewards. Learn anything new, Exile? If you did, then you'll probably be happy to hear there are more videos coming up in the near future with more exciting builds to try. Make sure not to miss them by subscribing to the channel so you get notified when that happens. And while you're at it, why not like this video as well or drop a comment down below to let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.